Okay. So. So far we've uh, covered a bit of an intro. That really covered why are we talking about principles and why are we talking about them in a concrete fashion. Very good. Then we looked at a parameter. I call it no if equals yes by default. Now that had wide ranging implications about the way that you need to approach basically everything compared to you know an empty handed art for lack of a better way to describe it. Then we looked at why we so why is it equal skill not technique? We're really building the base of the pyramid here. So, those things being true for us, what we want to look at now is the importance. And that's almost an understatement, right? Importance of good, strong, reasonable, useful in a in quotes here. Tax. Obviously, I don't like the word tax because it depends on you know, it's contextual. However, that's how people talk about it because they say, well, you know, this is a defensive thing, you're going to be attacked or something like that. It doesn't mean I'm not doing attacking or using those techniques to attack. But in parlance, good, strong, reasonable, useful attacks. So, if we are going to set a basic parameter, we have to say those things that we do to attack somebody have to be good, strong, reasonable, and useful. Good? Okay. So, what do we mean by good? I mean, well executed. What do I mean by strong? They're realistic. What do I mean by reasonable? They make sense. What do I mean by useful? They work. So, here for instance, is the crux of Aikido's problem. It does not have good, strong, reasonable, useful attacks. Now, let's take, let's pick these things apart. Okay. Good. Well, Well executed. Now, let me, let me remind you that Aikido comes from a school called Data Ryu, theoretically. And Data Ryu is a Jiu Jitsu school. Some of the time, that must have been, hopefully, practical, usable system, maybe. It depends on when it was come up with, etc, etc. Certain points in history didn't matter if it was practical. 
right? Like now, it doesn't matter. For them, obviously not. Well executed. Let me change the example now to boxing. Okay. Let me say that an excellent combination for someone to throw would be jab cross hook. Right? I don't think that anyone could argue that jab cross hook isn't a reasonable, right? Isn't an attack that has use in boxing. Good. Well executed. If the person's got good timing, they've got good distance, <laughs> they mess you up, bang, strong one there, bang, strong one there, still safe when they do it, bang, strong one there, maybe stepping off when they throw that hook, etc. Right? That's a well executed attack. Fantastic. Let's say that the answer to the jab cross hook is to step off the line laterally and hit him with a big cross. Okay. Let's say that that is a perfectly good answer to a jab cross hook combination. Right? Bit of timing, oof, stepped off, bang, hit him with a straight right. Let's just say. Okay. Let's say I'm practicing. I'm down the I'm down the boxing gym. Jab cross hook. I'm on the bag. Jab cross hook. Bang, bang, bang. Got good power. We go into sparring. Ooh, jab cross hook. Jab cross hook. Working it. Right, setting it up. Okay. My partner's doing that. My partner's working that. He's working it hard. Right. He's trying to get an angle on me. And I'm practicing trying to step off and hit him with the straight right. If I'm getting good at good attacks, right, that person's going jab cross hook at me well, right, I'm learning to defend it. If my partner throws his jab cross hooks deliberately poorly, so I can easily hit him with the straight right, so basically he goes jab and then just leans forward with his chin, cross hook. And I get used to that timing. He slowly goes jab, and I practice stepping off. And you knew. It's not helping me. So he's not learning how to throw a jab cross hook combination well, right? And I'm not learning how to defend it. If I practice defending that jab cross hook like that every time, and then jump in the ring with somebody who takes an angle on me, jab cross hook, bang! This one's nowhere. It's it's not going to happen. It's not preparing me at all for the timing, the speed, the ferocity of the attack. I've got the wrong timing. I've got the wrong timing now. It's probably actually worse than not practicing at all. If he practice, if he always throws jab cross hook at me ridiculously slowly with his chin out. It's more of an example of how not to throw a jab cross hook. So it's not well executed. So if every attack in Aikido the person comes stumbling in, reaching out, falling over, or their distance is so bad, should the blow land, they will a foot past the person that they were attacking anyway. I'm not learning the right timing anyway. I'm not learning how to actually, maybe the technique that I have is a perfectly good technique. Maybe stepping off and going, bang on the chin with the straight right is a perfectly good technique. I haven't learned how to execute it. It doesn't mean anything. So, let's say there's lots of Aikido techniques that you might draw some, well, some parallels with techniques that we do in terms of how does the mechanics of this work. It's just, it happens at a different speed different range, different intensity, and then therefore the way that it's applied is adjusted. But if you put them on the wall and you sort of go, no, that's the same technique, and you go, it is and it isn't. Now I can never get any good at it if that person doesn't attack well for me. I can never hit the right timing. I'm not learning anything myself. 
Strong. Realism. Realistic. So, <clears throat> if somebody, if I, I have a weapon, yeah, it's very common for people to grab at that hand. That's not a big statement. It's not controversial. But they don't go, okay? They grab it and they push it to your body. And they follow it up. They push it to your body and they follow it up. Okay. That's a strong attack. I push it to your body, I follow it up, I clamp it to your body, I knock you down, punch you in the face. Okay, very good. That's a long way from, he grabs my wrist and just stands there. So, again, realistic. Let's say if, I, if that person grabs my wrist and does nothing, I can do anything. If that person goes to my wrist and pushes towards me and then follows it up, well, the, the possibilities that I have now are much different. The, the directions that I have to go, the footwork that I have to use to stay on balance, all that kind of stuff is, is coming from the pressure of the attack. So I'm not going to come across that if I don't have that in the attack. So I don't know the, the skill of defending that if I don't get the pressure, part of the attack, part of the defense is what to do with that energy that comes in as he presses my hand up and tries to wrap me up and tries to punch me, right? Also, like, well, it doesn't matter if I just sort of never protect my head if he never punches me after he starts assaulting me in that fashion. Got to be realistic. I mean, this should not be something that is even up for discussion, this makes total sense. But, well there's whole martial arts that just threw this out the window. So we have to sort of say, well this is, a, this is definitely a parameter, this is one of the basic building blocks on the ground floor of our pyramid. Reasonable. That makes sense. So, it makes sense. If I have the knife, it makes sense that he, he's worried about that arm, he's worried about where that knife arm is, he's worried about where that knife is, he sort of compresses it in a certain way, like he's got to have control of it, he wants to, but like, yep, reasonable, that makes sense. Uh, sometimes I end up with, I end up seeing unreasonable attacks because I have, oh, I have this technique that I like. Okay, so let's take Aikido again. No, this is mixed up with good. If a person's head is here and they'd like to do sword taking, but if you look at where the angle of the sword was, well, oh, I was never going to, I was never going to hit him, right? That's not a well executed attack. Okay. Makes sense. Does chopping down through the head here make sense? Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Makes sense to chop him. How? Oh, hang on though. Why does he always go straight down? So, if that cut goes five degrees to the side, oh no, half my options that I usually use, I can't use them now. So it goes straight down because, well, it doesn't matter what side I go, as long as I move, I'm fine. Can't get it wrong. There's no doubt. Well, what if it goes five degrees either way? Oh, well, half of the things that I do are wrong. All right. Let's turn that to nine. Okay. <clears throat> Where's the rubber knife? There is much too much, say in traditional jiu-jitsu, where the knife comes to the middle 
and shoot straight out. Okay? And that's so people can execute all sorts of strange static body movements. All that becomes fine now because oh, I went straight down the middle. And he didn't, didn't attack me, he went straight down the middle. I can just stand here if he just aims at my belly button. I'm good, go either way, no problem. The problem is, it's not realistic. When people stab, they take a natural angle and they're stabbing into the side of the body, the torso, the neck. Yeah? This angle. The angle the arms work on. That's different from poking you right down the middle. So now, oh, well, if I make this realistic, that, that, that doesn't work. Standing there static and doing this doesn't work now because that angle isn't straight down the middle for me. Oh. Right? So it's got to be realistic, it's got to make sense. How do most people step on Most people step on this. Okay, right. If I'm going to do defending a stab to the, to, the, to the torso, shouldn't I do it in the way that everybody stabs? I actually have to make myself do this so you can just stand there and, and execute a hooky move. Okay? Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. It's not realistic. <clears throat> Useful. They work. There is no point in me practicing something that doesn't work just so someone else can practice a technique to defend that thing that doesn't work. Neither of us are getting anything out of that. Every attack, every time we look at a defense, defensive sequence, so our starting point is the attack. Right? That's, that's, that's how we do it. We do the attack and we go, make that work. Well. Make it all of these things. This has to this has to be this has to be something that I would would, would or could use. Right? There's nothing wrong with the headlock in the actual middle of a fight. However, there's something wrong with the headlock if I go and there's nothing in it. No head bashing, no trying to just get the guy off balance while you punch him in the head, dropping him on the ground and kicking him afterwards. None of that. Just that's that's not very useful to me because I want to learn how to pry that headlock properly. So I'm going to start every time by going attack side make that work well if it doesn't work well hmm. okay. even if it's a grab on the wrist the other opponent has a knife I've got a hand on that wrist I'm going to try and work that into something usable what am I going to do compress on his body try and get two hand control of that weapon arm head buddy right I'm gonna and then that is going to be the way that I now continue on to try and defend that. He's doing all these things to me. He's doing all these things to me. And then I'm going to see what do I have to do to keep out of trouble, to defend that, to get over that. I don't do that, then half of my training is pointless. Because every time I'm doing an attack, it's got no, I'm not learning anything, I'm not even trying to make that attack work, it's, there's no value in that attack. So let us take, for instance, Kendo. Actually, what? I'm going to take, I'm going to take Ju Kendo. Okay. 
their counter system is excellent because let's say they have six carters for using the bayonet against the bayonet the first three are attacks and they work this is how you attack I'm here, bang I knock it down and I stab him in the chest okay Ooh, bang I flick it off here and I stab him in the chest basic but strong good good strong reasonable useful attacks and then here we defend we defend those three good strong useful reasonable attacks so it's both sides of the coin both people are always doing something useful every bit of training you do is reasonable and useful <clears throat> what am I doing to myself if I'm training bad attacks so let's say one has to use a knife the only reason to attack in some ways is I've been trained to do it so I attack worse than somebody who's never had a day's training in their life Right? This must be a very common problem for people who do Aikido. Obviously, I think that they know that they're off balance when they hit somebody, but they go to the they go to training all the time to try and hit people while they're off balance. They make terrible grappling style attacks. They have to sort of forget all that attacking in an actual defensive situation if they're going to sort of attack it all. All that timing and all that distance and all that method of attack is totally useless to them. So why would I do that rather than make that attack good, make it work, understand how it works? Because also my defence has got to be a lot better. If all these things are reasonable, why not just do them in a matter, matter, matter that's realistic and that works? So. <clears throat> Let us then think if we're going to assess competence, right? which is what grades. Grades. They should assess confidence. Yeah, is that a controversial statement? For some martial arts, I'd suggest yes. Grading should assess confidence. Okay. Here we have, let's say we have uh, six cues or coloured belts right, and eight bands, right, or black slash whatever colour belt. So it's giving that yes. Okay, now. Six cue. Right. Tries to punch in the face. Punch face. Now, maybe you're both not very good at this, right? Right. It's very average. The quality of the attack is the quality of the attack is six Q. Okay. So the competence that can be assessed is probably up to fifth Q. Right? You can defend that 
You can say, well, in defender six Q level attack, you're probably a fifth Q. Here's one way of looking at it. Okay. Now, let's say we do Aikido. And the quality of our attack never changes, it's always bad. Alright? And down here, we do a 6Q attack. Bunch face. Might be a bit much for them. That's what we do. Let <coughs> me say, you did that so well, you're now 6 Dan. How can you say that? I can't know that you're any more confident than 5th Q because the quality of the attack is still down here. So, if this scale of confidence is going up, then this scale here must be going up to be able to assess If you're 6 then, well then surely this attack's got to be a much higher level than what you got on day one. But no, it's the same way of attack. However, over here in uh, practical jiu-jitsu land, right, 6Q attack, yeah, okay, maybe that's Maybe that's fifth gear. Maybe if you showed great control, you know, you could argue it's fourth gear. Right? If you want to go down here for uh, first Dan, well, this is no good. Right? Up here, we've, you've got to be first Q, right? Now, okay, these are hard things to define. I'm not going to define a Q level attack for every Q grade method of attack, but you're sort of saying by this stage here, this attack should be real good. The better that attack is, the better this person can show their competency. You're not helping anyone in training or in assessing their competency if you give them a terrible attack. Now, back to their boxing example. Jab, cross, hook, step off, straight right, when he starts that combination. If he throws that combination real good to me, I can be successful in that. In training, in sparring, in competition. That step off here, bam. That might have been something we did on the first week I started boxing, but that could win me a world title. Yeah. If the people I'm training with attack slowly and with their chin out, it's a long way from being able to hit that from being able to win a world title. The total different level of skill that's required to deal with the ever increasing skill level of the person who's trying to punch you in the face. So you cannot show that competency if you do not increase the competency of the attack. So, if I'm worried about practicalities, I've got to do attacks that are useful, reasonable, good. <clears throat> and that's going to be one of the building blocks of your system. Okay. So we spoke about the other building blocks. Oh, they're probably armed. Right, okay. And we're going to focus here on solving solutions by learning skills. We've got to take not looking to learn just hundreds of techniques, we're looking for the underlying skills. Okay, good. Next step, those attacks have got to work. They've got to be good attacks, they've got to be useful attacks. If that attack isn't if that attack isn't useful, it is literally not useful. So we want our attacks to be something that we're learning as well. We're learning to attack, we're learning to implement those attacks better. We're learning to implement those attacks better. Correspondingly, 
the level of competency that we can show when we deal with those attacks is going up. Up and up and up and up. If this attack never gets any better, then you never show any level of competency above the bottom level. And then you have to sort of say, well, why am I getting a sixth dan? What is the basis of that? If it is not my competence in implementing whatever strategy it is you have against our opponent, what then is the basis of competence that we're assessing down here? Now, altogether too much, this becomes if you don't do this, if you don't have the tax that are strong. You end up with this, and what are, what are we assessing? If not, competence. Well, attendance. Likeability. Payment. Crazy fees. Now, might be controversial, but there's some case of this recently in uh, Japan in uh, with the Ido presents bribes. Okay, because this now becomes subjective. Now, yes, a lot of assessment in martial arts is subjective, but. These are subjective assessments that have got nothing to do with what's actually being demonstrated in terms of the martial arts capacity. So what are we what are we assessing down here? All right. Uh, how much support you get from that person? All right. Maybe how many students they have. Who knows what we're assessing down here? But we're not assessing the ability to deal with a strong, useful, reasonable attack. This is how, this is one of the uses I think Aikido probably has. Okay. Now. I'm only going to, you know, I've already started offending my Kudo people already, so well, I'll stick on that vein. I'm not going to throw any more, I'm not going to throw any more in this one video. Okay. Do you, now I spoke about why I'm going to use this term rather than any other term. Okay. Is the winding road of Jiu Jitsu right, to where we are now. Okay. And along this road, there's signposts. Okay. Down here, quite late, really, in the scheme of things. We've got it here, we've got a signpost. Yep. Here, it's in the dirt, it says Aikido. Okay. There's lessons in all of these signposts along here. Right? This has become examples of what not to do. Now in martial arts, probably a lot of things, sometimes examples of what not to do are real important. Whatever you do, don't pick up anything, okay? Otherwise it's gonna fucking explode. Alright, oh, shit. Alright. Don't pick it up. If you didn't drop it, don't pick it up. Alright? What not to do? Here's a signpost on the history of Jiu-Jitsu, Aikido. What did we do there? 
Well, we did these things, we changed this method, uh -huh. we went down this road, mm -hmm -hmm. and in the end, those things weren't the way to run this. All these things are simply experiments. There's an experiment. The results. The results here look quite promising. Apparently, right? There's a lot of enthusiasm for, for some real well-known martial artists for what was happening here. But as time's gone by, ah, we've gone too far down this road. There's no reason that people can't take this and come back. But you know what they need to do? They need to get back to practical jiu-jitsu. Whether they go back to there, or whether they go back to there. If you want to do something that's, you know, useful, you need to head back down here. Okay, great. Now, you know, don't think too, the signposts over here, this road is covered with them. Or various types of jujitsu. Right? It just stopped there and it's just gone like that. And as time's moved on, you're either going forwards or backwards. We're going down. Okay. There's lots and lots and lots of jujitsu that are we're all just little we're all just little roads to go down as this thing flows through the time. Sometimes we've got to pay attention to these signposts and say, if you do this, 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 and this, if you set these parameters, these are the results you'll get. If you set a parameter where I'm no longer interested in whether this works, I'm no longer interested in uh, the, the quality of the attack at all, I no longer assess competency in terms of martial arts ability, well, that's where you'll go. And then you'll be there trying to explain why you, how you got there. And you'll be there because of the sunk cost effect, you'll be stuck there. So you've got to pay attention to the signposts, you know. So here, there's a signpost called Judo. That's gone in certain ways, up to there. Oh, we've got Olympics, All right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna add any direction on this line. Just one grip of a fence at a time. Okay, another there. All right, good. And there's a little sort of branch here, there, and there. Oh, we've got BJJ. Oh, great. All right. Right. But down here somewhere, there's a little. Well, around here, there's a little signpost here. On the ground that says combatives. Right? It's gone along here. These are all signposts along the way. And they're experiments that we can look at and we can sort of say, okay. They set those parameters, they got these results. They set those parameters, they got those results. They set those parameters, they got those results. We can, like a scientist, we can learn from them without running that experiment ourselves because we can observe the parameters of the experiment and the results of the experiment. So, you can go to here and go combative, you know, huh? you know, huh? some pluses, some minuses. When you do this, this sort of stuff, you get this result. Okay, interesting. But here you go, some pluses, some minuses, right? So when we have a look at any of these branches about what happened when I lost focus on the quality of the attack, the outcome is invariably all competency went down. That's just that's just a rule. Okay? So we have an observable Observable rule. Right? Reduce the quality 
of the opponent. Right, or the attack. If you do that, right, then level of confidence correspondingly goes down. Right. Now you might sort of say, then there's a therefore from that. Therefore, what happens? Well, these things happen. Eventually, you know, people are making fun of you on the internet. But we have to pay attention to these things. This is why we need to set this as a parameter, even though it seems incredibly obvious to most people. To most people who do practical views. If the quality of the opponent is low, then you cannot expect to be able to do anything more than a low quality. You can't assure anything more than a low quality. Therefore, we set a parameter Jitsu that attack opponent quality is good realistic reasonable useful etc. Because we're trying to avoid them going down that road. There we go. So, basically, there's a perimeter. 